You watched us smash the SRAM transmission derailleur with the equivalent of a hypersonic baseball. You watched us try to drown it underwater. Here's the shift underwater. And you watched us send it to outer space. It survived everything. Well, actually it didn't survive everything. It did break a little bit. This portion of the parallelogram, that small piece broke off, but it was a $20 fix. The replacement kit. And I've been using that exact same derailleur on my Revo Rail 29 ever since. However, I suspect most of you did not run out to upgrade to this newest $1,600 drivetrain. In fact, one of the things we discovered in that video was how durable the normal axis derailleurs really are. And I personally have never had much of an issue with mechanical drivetrains. Well, as SRAM is wont to do, they have trickled that technology down into a GX version. And today we're gonna take a look at it and see what the differences are and whether or not you might want to upgrade to it or possibly put it on your brand new dream build from our custom bike builder. The derailleur is of course the most interesting part of this whole drivetrain, but since you have to run all T-type component, that's transmission type, I'm gonna start with the cranks. The GX cranks are forged aluminum and have a similar aesthetic to the XO model, although they are much more rounded off. I read some comments in our last video about people worrying that these sharp edges might bite you in the ankle. That's not something I've personally experienced, but if it's something you're worried about, the GX option might be better for you. Now, other differences are that these bash guards on the GX model are composite. They're a type of plastic as opposed to the alloy ones on the XO model. You can upgrade these to the alloy ones if you want. Bash guards have been made out of composite for ages and it's worked fine, so I don't see the need for that. They are on both sides of the crank, so whether you ride left foot forward or right foot forward, you're covered. You can, if you want, remove the one that you're not using. And lastly, the GX crank is not compatible with the dub power spindle. That's the spindle-based power meter that fits in the spindle itself. They are, however, compatible with the slightly less accurate <clears throat> spider-based model. If you're really worried about watts and measuring them, you're probably running the lightest gear possible anyway, so I don't anticipate that being an issue. Next up is the GX cassette, which is much shinier than the more expensive models. That's because they use an electrolytic process to coat all the steel cogs in nickel. That increases their hardness and durability and makes it look pretty cool. That is unlike the XO model cassette, which uses an electroless coating process, again, to cover it in nickel, that again adds more hardness, durability, it has some lubricating properties, but is significantly more expensive. Aside from that, more of the cogs on this XO model, as we can see here, are machined from the same piece of steel versus only the last four on the GX model. This just increases weight on this, but saves in cost. SRAM has claimed that their T-type flat top chain is the strongest chain they've ever made, and they've carried that through on their GX drivetrain. Now, it doesn't have the hollow pins or fancy coating that the XX model has, or the cool black finish that the XO model has, but it is e-bike approved, and at $50, it is $100 less than the most expensive XXSL model. Last but not least is the GX transmission derailleur. Now, if we compare this to a more expensive model like this XO version I have here, we'll see that this assembly here where the gearbox and the motor are located is a bit fatter on the GX model as opposed to this longer shape on the XO. The reason is because they've managed to shove the entire battery into that assembly. It seems they listened to those of you who were concerned about knocking this thing off. Not something that's ever happened to me, by the way. Functionally, this is identical to that model and it all shifts the same. As expected, there are plenty of material differences on this thing with a steel inner cage instead of the entirely aluminum one on the XO model or the carbon one on the XXSL model. Now, a cool thing about this is that like with the more expensive models, this is easily replaceable. And in fact, these can be swapped between any model derailleur. So if you were to break one of these, you could try, say, the steel model. Now, that brings me to a question that many of you posed on our derailleur smashing video, which was why did you smash this assembly up here instead of the cage itself? We had three reasons for that. Firstly, in our experience, we found that typically when you're bending a derailleur, it's because you've laid your bike down and typically that impact happens on the B-knuckle. Go check your own bike. 
I can pretty much guarantee if you've had it for any amount of time, that you'll find some scuffs up here on your derailleur. Now, the second reason was that because this cage that hangs off the bottom is a much weaker piece, there's a lot more leverage that it can exert on there, and it's just two thin pieces of metal. So it would make for a far less entertaining video. The third reason is that on these transmission derailleurs, like we just established, that whole piece is replaceable. So if you do break it, it's an easy fix. That actually brings me to a comment that I got from a friend last week, in fact, that he had broken two of these cages. That really surprised me. And I went to ask our warranty and sales staff if they had encountered any other instances of any issues on transmission derailleurs. Turns out they hadn't. Now, this friend is one of the gnarliest people on a bike that I know, and I suspect that might have something to do with it. And in fact, I'd like to get him on one of these steel cages to see if that makes a difference for him. I explained to you in this video why I think SRAM transmission is such a big deal. And now that we have GX transmission, it is $600 more affordable. Not only that, but because all these parts are so compatible, you can pick and choose how you wanna spend your money. If it's something that you do think you wanna to upgrade to, and you have a bike with a UDH hanger, head on over to fanaticbike.com because we've got these in stock. And if you're thinking about building up a new bike, maybe check out our custom bike builder. We've got it loaded up in there so you can build your dream bike exactly how you'd want and see what it looks like on there. Now, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, please let us know in the comments below. If you like watching these videos and you think your friends might too, send it to them. Please subscribe to our channel. All that stuff helps us make these videos and we really enjoy bringing you this content. Now, thanks for watching y'all. We'll see you next time.